questions for reflection. Today is All Saints Day, and our first reading is from the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible. The wonderful, mystical experience given to the Apostle John when he was imprisoned on the island of Patmos as an old man. We have presented to us a scene of what is to come, a multitude of people from every race and nation standing before God. Their robes are washed white in the blood of the Lamb. They are redeemed, freed from the penalty of sin by the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. This beautiful scene is God's promise to you if you will wash your robes white in the blood of the Lamb. You will have a place before God and in the communion of all the saints in the life that is to come. That life begins even now when we live our lives for, with, and in the Lord Jesus Christ. We're all called to be saints. The word means holy ones. In this powerful scene from the book of Revelation, notice what all the saints are doing. They're worshiping the Lord. We are called to enter into that worship in a special way at every holy mass. It is the marriage supper of the Lamb. We are actually present on Calvary and in the feast which we hear of proclaimed in our first reading. The holy mass is meant to be a mystical experience for those who draw closer and closer to the Lord. Our capacity to worship is also intended to grow as our relationship with Jesus Christ grows. So when the time comes and we're called to pass from this life to the next, we will not experience a kind of culture shock. Heaven will already have entered us and prepared us to enter it. Our responsorial psalm asks, who shall go up the mountain of Yahweh? This means who shall be worthy to stand in the presence of the Lord. The answer is all of us who are clean of hand and pure of heart. In other words, those who accept salvation through Jesus Christ and who live according to the commandments of God and continue to grow in holiness by cooperating with grace. Our second reading tells us we are God's children even now. What we will become, we can only begin to perceive as we grow in our knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. The beloved disciple John tells us, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. How do we move forward in this journey toward the Lord? Again, the beloved disciple tells us to cherish this hope of heaven and purify ourselves, to become pure or holy as he is. Jesus goes up on the mountain, and in this sermon, he speaks of the saints. Those with a capital S, the ones in heaven, and those with a small s, you and me, called to the path of holiness, which leads through him to eternity. We're to live differently, to become more and more like him. And as we do that, by cooperating with the grace he gives to us, we will be blessed. The word translated beatitude can also be translated happy in the Beatitudes. The New Testament and the writings of the early church fathers emphasize the vocation to beatitude or happiness. The path to happiness passes through the cross and resurrection of Jesus Christ. He's done for us what we could never do for ourselves. Through the Holy Spirit, we are being set free from what St. Paul calls the law of sin and death, and that's in Romans 8 too. We're not only set free from sin, we are set free for a new way of life as a Christian, a follower of the Christ, one who makes the risen Jesus Christ present in the stuff of daily life. And this process of conversion in the life of a follower of Jesus involves the exercise of human freedom through the capacity of human choice. What we choose not only changes the world around us, it changes us. This is the heart of Catholic moral theology. As we choose the Lord, as we grow in the life of the Holy Spirit, we begin to experience real happiness, the kind that doesn't disappear in struggle or become extinguished by difficulty. His image is restored in us, and we begin to grow in His likeness. Such a robust moral vision calls us to growth in virtue. The theological virtues of faith, hope, and charity, or love, are infused in us through baptism. The hinge, or cardinal virtues, in a proper sense, are acquired through a lifestyle of living faith, participation in the sacramental life of the church. And this vision of a dynamic Christian life involves the development of what we're called habitus in Latin, from which we derive the word habit. Let's call them habits of holiness. They're habits of happiness also, because holiness is happiness. 
And these habits are powers to act with excellence, which are formed within the Christian believer through our cooperation with grace. The Holy Spirit bestows upon us the spiritual gifts and empowers us to a lifestyle of conversion where we can cultivate the fruits of the Spirit. The Apostle Paul mentions these in the fifth chapter of his letter to the Galatians, from which was taken our second reading. Love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. There's a call to happiness planted within every human person as a seed. Beatitude, or happiness, finds its perfect expression in the teaching of Jesus on the Sermon on the Mount. It was lived and demonstrated in His sacred humanity, which is a model for all human beings. Look at Gaudium et Spes, number 22. And it's meant to be replicated in the life of each man and woman who is baptized into His church and learns to clothe themselves in virtue and live in Beatitude, beginning now. St. Jose Maria Scriva once wrote these words, I'm every day more convinced that happiness in heaven is for those who know how to be happy on earth. That's from the Forge 1005. Happy Feast of All Saints.